Teddy's poem. I put the fire on the outside of my head. Why? Well, isn't that obvious? Who takes the time to slow down and look inside? Yes, there was a fire inside and I passed it on. I broke when the fire went out in my son. When the rain came down and cried him to sleep. I thought I was done. Then God made me look in the mirror. I saw the fire on my head, there to remind even me. I saw behind me a girl, a beautiful girl with fire in her eyes, a strong and funny girl, a brave and bright girl, a girl again who wasn't being seen inside her head. And I brightened the fire on my head and held it higher for her and all the world to see that even that rain can't put out the fire. Even the rain. I never read a book that was ever printed about Paul that was honest and kind and understanding and maybe he was to them uh, too rich, uh, too something, I don't know what. Nobody lived here when we came here and we drove right through here and Paul stopped his, his car here and he said, look, and I looked up and I said, what the, well, who was here and what are we doing here? And he said, I just bought it. I just bought it. That's what he said. And I said, oh my God. And I looked at it. And then he said, look over here, Teddy. And this was green grass all the way down. And then the sea. We could never hear any traffic. The, you know something that they don't have and that I keep saying, please get? And they say, well, we have them somewhere all those tapestries, they put them away. One person said they're old, that's oh. why they, we put them away. I said, well, what would they not be old if they were done in 1792? You know, they are old to begin with. The minute he looked at me, he said, let's dance. So then we danced and then immediately, he, he said, you have a beautiful voice. I thought, well, a lot of people said it because I did have a good voice then. And I said, thank you. I always wanted to sing. And if you see a picture of him that I have here, his eyes just looked at me and he wasn't flirting or anything. It was just a look. And so you could do it if you want to do it. It was a regular marriage with me sitting at home waiting for him to come home from the office. Because right. every singer has a normal life and then they go off and sing. I mean, it's yeah. not unusual. He got a piano, rented a piano in Tulsa, put it in the house and start singing. Mm -hmm. You have a beautiful voice, You've, you've spent two years in jail, or whatever it is. Get going with it again, Teddy. Whatever Paul wants, <laughs> whatever Lola wants, <laughs> Lola gets, that's really mm -hmm. his tune. Mm -hmm. You yeah. made a movie when Paul was out of town oh, yeah. and he got very mad at you? Don't tell a secret like that. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this the fountain that was in yeah. the movie? Well, what, maybe you should tell them a little bit about that. That was the Mark of the Eagle. It still may be a movie. It was a book. Stop it! Why are you beating him? This happens to be my business, senora. But if you must know, he's a spy. He must talk. He's an American. You know right. This is California. Or have you forgotten you're in Mexican territory now? I've forgotten nothing, Captain. But you've forgotten that we're Americans, and we demand to be released. What do you call the girls that we're showing? Um, what do you call them? The docent. Um, said, well, you know, Mr. Getty never lived here, and I was with Mr. Blackwell, a great designer of clothes, and I looked down at the, at the girl, and I looked up at him, and I said, well, if 
Paul wasn't here, who the hell was I sleeping with? Because we were here together. <laughs> Look, I'm 97. I've seen so many breakups and people not making it or making it and then sorry. And I think somewhere someone asked me, would you like to marry Paul again? And Gigi will tell you that we went over to see him about the year and a half before he died. And he was sitting there next to Gigi and me. And he looked up at me and said, how about it? Don't you think we ought to get married again? So we all laughed. And he said, I'm serious. I said, darling, you are serious this minute. But if it happened, I think I probably, no, I don't think you'd like it at all. He said, I need you, Ted. And that's the end. There's a bend in the river that you can't see. Hey, do you fear your journey's at an end? Wooded hills rise before you. You know how old I am. I worry all the time and then I say, stop worrying. Just be happy. Be glad you're alive. You give out your love and that shows in your face. Please don't worry. <laughs>